whilst members may have it, there are uh, others who are on the platform who don't have it so that they may be able to follow correctly. So we are in your hands, sir. Uh, please proceed. Thank you very much. I have put it in a, in a presentation format. Um, good morning, um, honorable members. Um, good morning, uh, members um, um, and the uh, officials as well as the public at large. Our presentation this morning on the, um, is on the quarter four um, de deviations and expansions. There's two presentations I will make. Um, the next presentation would be on the rationale and objectives of the um, new instruction note um, that, that seeks to address a, a number of issues within the um, public procurement sphere. If I may kick start with the deviations um, for quarter four, um, the, the presentation outline is as um, reflected on the screen. Um, if I may um, cover the legislative basis as we normally um, um, do, the um, legislative mandate for us um, with regards to um, the presentation stems out from a Treasury Regulation 16A um, 6.4, um, which, which indicates that if in a specific case it is impractical to invite competitive bids, the accounting officer or accounting authority may procure the required goods or services by other means, provided that the reasons for deviating from inviting competitive bids must be recorded um, and approved by the accounting officer or accounting authority. Um, what, what I would like us to, to take note of, Honorable Chair, is, is, is what the instruction says. Is, it, it speaks of the accounting officer or the accounting of, um, authority. You would um, take note when we discuss the um, rationale for revision um, or for publication of the new instruction note, it will revolve around um, 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 these regulations, specifically the PFMA. What we um, have then is um, SCM instruction number two of 21-22, which indicated the thresholds. And it also indicates that within 10 working days of um, having the um, of the contract award or approval that the relevant treasury and auditor general um, must be informed um, of all the um, 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 deviations above that threshold. The instruction note three of 2016-17 um, um, specific reference to um, section or uh, paragraph eight of the instruction note indicates that the accounting officer or the accounting authority must only deviate from um, inviting competitive bids in cases where there is emergencies or there is a sole supplier status. It also um, indicates that um, and it, what in, defines what an emergency procurement would be, which indicates that it must be immediate risk to health, life or property or the surrounding environment. Um, um, and there is insufficient time for competitive bids to be requested or solicited. Um, paragraph 8.3 says um, that a sole, sole source procurement may only occur where there's only one bidder um, or one sufficient or one supplier that could um, satisfy the needs that are identified. Um, if I may jump to 8.5, it says any other deviation will be allowed um, um, in exceptional cases subject to the prior written approval from the relevant treasury. Paragraph nine um, speaks of the um, expansion or variation um, of orders. If I may jump to 9.2 .2 of the paragraph, it says any deviation in excess of the prescribed threshold will only be allowed in exceptional cases subject to prior written approval from the relevant treasury. Um, this, this background um, sketch the um, scene um, for, for, for the next coming sections of the presentation, indicating what um, were the conditions or the circumstances that were allowable for um, the organs of states, especially the accounting offices, um, to deviate um, or to vary contracts um, in, in, in the last quarter, as would be presented. The deviation types um, are a single source, an unsolicited bid, a closed limited bid, as well as the use of um, 
um, request for quotations instead of a competitive bid. Contract modification types will include the extension of co contract or a purchase order where there, there was no need to have a contract. A purchase order is sufficient as a contract. Um, where there was an expansion of scope in the contract or the purchase order or where the variation of contracts or the purchase order was, was effected. If I may go directly to the, to the variations, um, Chair, we had um, in total um, 14 billion of, of, of value of, of contracts that, that, were, that were, um, where deviations were effected. 98% of those um, were on the top 20 government institutions and the 2% were on the rest of the other institutions. Um, the top 20 government institutions at 14 billion, the, the number of applications were 64. Um, and um, in total, we had a, a, a number of 172 um, 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 variations um, um, in, in the last quarter. When you look at the top 20 variations applications in value, you would note um, that Transnet um, had the majority of the variations in terms of value, followed by SARS and, and then ESCOM and then the um, government printing works and the Petro, Petro SA, um, in, including the correctional services, um, which, 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 which then indicates that the um, majority and the bulk of um, the top 20 went uh, specifically to the top five um, um, in terms of value of the deviations in the last quarter. Um, this, if you look at the um, top 20 variation applications in numbers, total of 87, um, SARS had nine, National Treasury had six, ESCOM had six, um, BBI and um, DEF, as well as the public works had six um, in that um, descending order. If you look at the um, top 20 supported and not supported deviations, um, members, honorable members, um, you would note that um, if you look at the um, graph on the value supported and not supported, 63% um, of the um, deviations that were sent through were not supported, which is quite a substantial amount um, or number of, of, of deviations that were not supported, um, with 30% that were conditionally supported, um, um, and um, just about 5% which were just for, for noting. If you look at, at the number of, of those um, that, that, um, that were supported and not supported, you would, you would note that 28% um, were conditionally supported, which is about 18 um, variations. Um, and you would have 27%, um, which is 17 in number of those that were not supported, um, and 16%, and which is only 10 that were supported, and only 22%, which is 14 of those that were, that were noted. If at all um, we have received any of the deviation requests that reside within the authority um, of the accounting officer, um, we then refer them back um, to the accounting officer and the authority. Only 6%, which is about four, were referred back for the accounting officer, the accounting authority to um, adjudicate on um, and, and, and make sure that they make the decision. Um, what, what this graph is indicating to us is that majority of the um, variations that we have received as National Treasury in the last quarter um, um, at 63% were not supported and the 30% that we have received um, had, had the conditions attached to, to them. So um, quite a very small amount of them were outright approvals without any conditions. This is quite a busy slide, um, um, but it just indicates the positioning with regards to um, the slide that, have, that I have just um, um, presented. In total, 14 billion with 64 transactions 
that took place um, um, on the top 20. And in total, if you look at the bottom line, there's just about 172 of the deviation requests that we received from the organs of state um, in the last quarter, which is quite a sizable amount of deviations. Um, Honorable Chair, we will move to the contract modifications. Um, in the last quarter, we have received um, just about um, 162 um, requests for contract deviations. Um, if I may just um, 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 contextualize what deviations would be, there is an existing contract. And for some reason, um, there may be a change in scope. There may be a change in, in price. There may be a change in the duration whatever um, reasons it may be um, that warrants a, 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 a shift from the original um, contracted conditions, um, such we would call a contract modification. 162 of them were received from organs of state with 84 um, 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 received from the top 20 government institutions. Um, in total, 99% came from top 20. Um, government institutions. I will share who they are in the next slide. Um, and only um, um, a, a, a just less than 1% were received from the rest of the organs of states. Um, um, ESCOM um, sent the highest um, in terms of value um, um, in fact, they are top 90% themselves um, in terms of the request for contract modification. SARS and um, Department of Health, as well as National Treasury and the Department of Basic Education um, um, followed in that um, descending order. If we look in terms of, 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 of numbers, um, um, you, you, you would um, take note, Honorable Chair, that um, we have CCMA at 17, even though they have a number, quite a huge number, they, the values are quite small. So um, 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 they would not feature in, 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 in the top 20%. Um, um, ESCOM had 15 um, modifications in total, SARS had nine, DBSA had eight, SA Tourism um, in that descending order. In total, we had hundred um, um, number of those in the top 20. If we look at the value supported and not supported um, 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 pie chart, um, Chair, you would note that 87% of the modification that were um, considered or supported by National Treasury um, had conditions attached to them. Um, and outright um, support um, um, were only 10%. Um, and uh, I mean, not supported were 10% and outright support were 3%. Um, if you look in terms of, of, of number, um, we conditionally supported 47 um, um, of the modifications that we received um, and 17 were not supported and 14 were outright supported with only four that were noted. And, and we closed two because the organ of state did not provide us information um, um, as we were requesting. And therefore that mod request for modification, we would uh, um, close um, without um, um, giving any opinion or support. This is the high level presentation um, of um, the modification um, status. Um, ESCOM, as you would note, um, at um, 31 billion um, with 15 counts, South African Revenue Services um, at, at 841 million um, with nine counts. In total on the top 20, we have 33 billion at 84 counts. Um, in total, 33 billion with 162 counts with regards to the modification requests. Um, from the organs of state with ESCOM um, having the bulk of those modifications. The common reasons, um, um, Chair, this, this slide is no different from, from um, the previous ones. 
the same trends um, 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 come through from um, the analysis of the slides. Um, the sole supplier or utilization of single source is, is what comes. Um, um, the, close, the request for closed bid processes still comes through. Um, there's also an element of business continuity. SARS had one, ESCOM had one in terms of their strategy for business continuity. Um, there's also um, 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 an increase in trends um, with regards to business strategy and operational strategies that are implemented in the, in the um, organs of states, um, ESCOM being one that, that, that cites such in, in, in their modification requests as well as in their deviation requests. Um, there's also elements of service delivery where we would not want the service delivery to be um, 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 hampered and therefore we would not um, 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 we would we would put such such conditions in place such conditions in place um, extensions of current contracts um, due to new tender process not concluded in time organs of states are not concluding the contracts um, this this is one pandemic that that creeps up um, um, honorable chair honorable members that the organs of states that do not start the procurement processes on time. As a result, it leads to them having a necessity to um, extend the current contract so that the service delivery um, continues and that there is no break, breakdown in terms of service provision and making sure that government works. Um, that's, that's one area that we, we, will, we will keep an eye on um, unfortunately, because of um, various repository systems, um, ERP systems, we are unable to pick up when some of these contracts are going to expire. We are hoping that organs of states with regards to what we would expect them to report on in the new instruction, we would be able to pick up some of these um, and be able to manage them from a national treasury perspective. But it still remains the um, responsibility of the accounting officer to ensure that um, they invoke proper controls in their space for when contracts are going to expire and making sure that new contracts are put in place um, before those expire. Taking into account that the supplier uh, market at the moment um, have more bargaining power with, with regards to the procurement and therefore um, starting the process would entail um, having negotiations with them on price and negotiations on scope and that could take a bit of time and, and accounting officers um, guided by the chief financial officers as well as the bid adjudication committees may, may, may have to make sure that they start the procurement processes in place and timelessly. Um, continue using of existing softwares. Softwares are a challenge for business continuity and it's something that we have to look at. Moving forward, we may have to negotiate to, to engage CETA and, and, and ensure that in terms of the software utilization in government, how do we then ensure that um, these licenses and softwares are managed? Um, there's quite a number of softwares in application in government. We see those through the application for continuous um, or continuity of utilization of these soft softwares. Um, there are also issues with regards to exceeding the 15% or the 15 million threshold um, and the same as 20% and 20 million thresholds. Uh, majority of the requests revolve around this, where there's been, uh, where the scope has to be varied because it exceeds 15% um, in terms of, 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 of um, contract value and 20% for, for the construction environment. The government to government procurement is, is, is also seen as, as an increase. Um, National School of Governments um, of Government is, is one area where we see government to government procurement taking place. Um, GTEC, CSIR, and, 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 and some other government entities, um, we are seeing a move towards utilization of these government um, 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 entities for procurement. Um, and um, we, we need to explore um, to what extent government benefits um, and, and quantify those benefits for government but there is that move. And an expansion of scope with regards to time and material is, is also one of the common threats for deviations and expansions. I have, I have spoken to that and, and increasing in departure from the competitive bidding processes, continuous modification, 
Um, um, we are also seeing an increasing audit disputes. Um, 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 we, we are engaging um, with um, AGSA and we will continue to engage with AGSA um, as OCPO where there are disputes. Um, and, and there is a new document on dispute settle, settling mechanisms um, that, that we are still looking at with, with um, AGSA. We are hoping that it will eliminate a number of these disputes that are, that are going to come through, um, particularly with the revision of the instruction that um, we have just introduced from the 1st of April. Poor procurement planning is one of them I've spoken to with regards to not starting procurement um, 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 timelessly, resulting in contracts being varied or um, expanded. Poor implementation of projects. Um, in the last um, engagement, um, 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 Honorable Chair, I have spoken to the fact that government does not have sound project management principles, nor has it places um, responsibility on any of the organs of states to manage how procure, uh, project management would happen in government. And that's something we would have to, to take as um, as OCPO because it um, 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 migrates very nicely into procurement and it, it starts to distort how procurement needs to happen. If projects are not managed properly, deviation starts to creep in and contract modif modification starts to creep in. But the general principle is that projects must be managed properly and they must be tracked properly using the methods and methodologies um, um, that are available out there in, in the market. What we are doing in our space um, as OCPO, we are going to implement um, guide, guidance and principles on, on, on contract management, and we will be rolling that um, very shortly. Um, it is at an advanced stage. Um, for governance structures, um, um, where um, 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 delegation of authority documents are not clear, and even if delegation of authority documents are not clear, those that are entrusted with ensuring that um, approvals and sign-offs happen at the right levels within the organization must um, 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 ensure that they are gatekeep, gate, gatekeepers as well as the uh, control measures to ensure that um, 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 thresholds and approvals happen at the right um, um, processes or at the right levels. We still see some of those where approvals happen where they're not supposed to happen and therefore um, 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 increasing um, irregular expenditure within the procurement environment. Non-implementation of consequence management on, on, on officials who cause irregular expenditure. We test this with regards to the number of audit findings that AGSA has raised in a particular year and how many um, 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 the condonations that have been sent through to national treasury with regards to that irregular expenditure. Not many con condonation requests come through. Therefore, um, we may extrapolate that um, there might be lack of implementation of consequence management in those um, irregular expenditure um, 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 findings where such consequence management needs to be taken. Um, and therefore, national treasury is unable to deal with those if um, they are not sent through to us to have a look at. These, these are the um, operational challenges and remedies. They, they have remained consistent over time. Um, Chair and not um, 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 present these um, in this meeting this morning. Um, that's, that concludes this part of the presentation. Um, Chair, I will take a cue from you. Um, would you like us to take questions and answers on these before we go to the next presentation? Um, yeah, please advise. I think, colleagues, it's best let's do that because the, the issues are uh, the other's implementation and the other's a policy matter for, you know, and I think they are quite vastly different. Um, so, colleagues, you will indicate if you would like to ask a question in the side office. I'm just checking now. Unless you can just indicate here, colleagues, if you wish to, 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 to raise a question. All right. Okay, let's do this. Uh, uh, 
go to the next presentation. Um, and then we will, we, we, yeah, let take, let take us to the next presentation, that's fine. We'll, we'll certainly do that, Honorable okay. Chair. All right, thanks. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, honorable members, the next presentation would be on the prevention and combating abuse of SCM system. This is the new instruction note, um, um, three of, um, of 2021-22. That's an update um, on the provisions of the revised National Treasury SCM. We have revised instruction note three of 2016-17. Um, and put together a new instruction note altogether. Um, the new instruction note looks um, um, and makes um, provision for, among others, what the Constitutional Court um, indicated in its, in its judgment um, in February, as well as um, the um, findings and the recommendations that were uh, made by the Zondo Commission, as well as all other um, best practices and trends that we have picked up um, in, in the management of the um, um, deviations and modification, as well as um, management of all other case laws um, in the country um, as we experience them from time to time. The, the contents of the um, presentation, we would look at the reasons why the new instruction the purpose um, for that instruction, as well as the various areas um, that were enhanced in, in the instruction um, and what are the um, in, um, practice notes and circulars, as well as instructions that were repealed as, as a result of um, issuance of this new instruction. And then we will conclude at, um, at that. Um, I think I would start, um, Honorable Chair, with, with, with the rationale for the revision of the instruction. Um, in reviewing this instruction, the National Treasury, especially the Office of the Chief Procurement Officer, adopt, adopted a number of principles and approaches. The first one is that um, we, we wanted to ensure that the revised instruction that does not encroach um, on the institutional accountability um, conferred upon the accounting officers and accounting authorities by the available um, pieces of legislation with specific reference to PFMA, um, which um, the, the rationale there is that the Constitutional Court has held that conduct by an organ of states that has no foundation in some law breaches the principle of legality, which is a subject of the rule of the law, um, a fundamental value of the Constitution. Um, so the functionary entrusted with the regulation um, making power cannot stray from the parameters set by the empowering legislation. What that means is that if the constitutional court and the PFMA or any other um, um, pieces of legislation that already exists provide certain um, 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 framework, um, the national treasury may not um, deviate from ensuring that they overstep their authority with regards to placing additional recommendation which are not supported by the constitution and the um, subordinate acts um, to the constitution. Um, also, we, we should not um, um, take powers from the accounting offices and accounting authorities, um, but we should be seen to be making sure that the accounting offices and the accounting authorities take accountability for what they have been um, 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 entrusted to do um, by the constitution and the um, primary legislation um, that supports the constitution. The second rationale is, 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 is to, to find other legally cognizable means to get institutions to do what they must do. Um, what we have found ourselves um, doing is that when organs of states are not doing what they are supposed to be doing, Honorable Chair, we wanted National Treasury 
to, to place, um, to take that responsibility and make sure that the organs of states do what they're supposed to do. Instead of making sure that the accounting officers are accountable for making sure that PFMA's provisions are followed to the latter and that um, 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 procurement within the area of accountability happens in line with the applicable legislation that governs SCM or that governs public procurement. Um, once again, drawing lessons from, from case law, the Constitutional Court have also held that if the minister is of the view that organs of states are failing to do what they are required to do, um, um, he must find other legally cognizable means to get them to do what they must do. For, in, for an example that we can place is that he might engage organs of states politically or he, or he could introduce a bill in parliament with a view of amending the legislation. Um, but the national treasury should not take that accountability um, and, 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 and places the accounting officers less um, um, accountable for what they are supposed to do. Um, to this end, um, honorable chair, honorable members, the office of the chief procurement officer had to firstly test all inputs received. Um, 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 when we opened the, um, when you published the, the, the new instruction for public comment, um, 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 and secondly, find legally, legally cognizable means, which in this case was to provide for um, reporting requirements that would strengthen the transparency of procurement within institutions that forcing accounting officers and authorities to be accountable because of the proverbial light would be shown on them. Um, 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 really what, what we're trying to do or in this instruction note is, is, is to send a strong message to the accounting authorities and accounting officers that you are entrusted in terms of PFMA um, and in terms of the provisions of the constitution to ensure that procurement happens in the manner that is structured and in the manner that is fair, um, 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 transparent, and you will take accountability for spending the money that has been made available to you or to the organ of state um, and, and let the spotlight shine on you for not having exercised your responsibility um, 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 in terms of spending government money. The amendment of the regulations under the PFMA and the development of the public procurement bill may be the mechanisms that can be used to provide such opportunity for national treasury as well as the minister to improve um, efficiencies in the public procurement domain. Um, the next rationale, um, um, honorable chair, honorable members, um, is to bridge the disparity between government departments. What happened was the treasury regulation 16A um, excluded some of the schedules um, of the state-owned um, companies um, 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 from um, th that regulation. What we are doing now with the new instruction is to ensure that all organs of states um, are included in the instruction and making sure that um, they are um, 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 particularly included to make sure that the ethical standards as well as avoidance of abuse of the SCM system is also applicable to them. To this end, the revised instruction um, differs, differs somewhat from the um, strict format of being a directive, but has in various places um, um, provided the context for, um, for government to ensure that it, it, it does procurement efficiently. Um, um, the areas where we found um, gaps are the um, um, general conditions of contract, standard bidding documents, and, and, and so forth, and those we have tried to close the loop on. The fourth rationale was um, um, considered the extensive input um, by stakeholders, some of which were um, 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 opposed to others, Thus, the OCPO had to ensure that a balance was struck between competing interests while maintaining respective legislative mandates. Um, we had um, an, an opposing um, views in terms of the um, 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 inputs we have received from um, 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 our public participation. Um, some felt that the, the um, instruction of 3, 16, 17 was adequate enough to provide the framework um, required for National Treasury to exercise its responsibility. While on the other hand, 
um, we, 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 with regards to objective number one, where National Treasury did not want to encroach into the um, accountability of the accounting officers as placed by the Public, um, Public Finance Management Act. Um, um, we, we have received some of the organs of states that says provide um, accountability to the accounting officers and let them be accountable um, um, for, for the procurement of goods and services in line with the PFMA and any other um, um, primary legislation supporting the constitution. The purpose then of the revision was threefold um, with the instruction um, um, providing the following manage, measures um, to improve accountability and transparency in the procurement of goods and services, to reduce the abuse of the supply chain management system and to ensure the value for, for, for money um, um, in, um, within the SEM um, environment. Therefore, there is a shift in focus to reporting to various accountability structures, enabling um, the relevant treasuries, including national treasury, to perform its monitoring role within the confines of the prevailing legislation. So instead of national treasury, um, honorable chair, honorable members, um, um, being operationally involved in the, or in the organs of state, rather shift from ensuring that their accountability rests with ensuring that they perform the monitoring function, um, um, utilizing the prevailing legislative environment that exists within government. All relevant role players, including um, accounting officers and authorities, are enabled to operate within their mandates within their operating, operational um, as well, um, or tactical, as well as the uh, strategic environment. One of the things that the new instruction um, um, seeks to, to address is issues of investigation of complaints and allegations of abuse. Um, 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 the instruction provides for the register to be established, maintained, within the institution that deals with logging complaints and allegations of abuse of the SCM systems. Um, we, we to date not have had a register um, of such. Um, now we will be, um, the organs of states will be required to record. Um, the reason for this is that national treasury would receive this and therefore manage the trends and analyze the trends and respond accordingly with regards to the gaps that may exist within the, the legislative environment, or to look at what would be the, um, 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 the reasons from a behavioral point of view with regards to um, 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 officials in government, um, that, um, um, or what would be the behavior with regards to the supplier behavior. Um, um, remember, um, honorable chair, honorable members, that um, corruption would happen in two folds from the officials point of view, as well as the, from the suppliers point of view. Um, and, 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 and we would like to remedy it um, from both angles. Um, initially, the draft had included require, requiring um, a report of the allegations of abuse against the head of the relevant treasury to be sent to the executive authority to solicit opinion on how such allegations should be treated bearing in mind that the drafting team was concerned that instruction would be overarching. Um, what what we, 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 we then corrected was, um, let um, the um, executive authority receive the report um, and let the executive authority then exercise their executive authority over um, the reports that they receive. Um, what, what that means then is that comments received from internal stakeholders also had a similar concern and we have the view that national treasury cannot prescribe what an executive authority should do. Um, and a decision was taken that the executive authority can be notified. However, it would be incumbent of the respective executive authority to take appropriate action without prescribing it in the instruction. The, the next one that um, 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 enhancement we have done in the instruction was the treatment of disclosure and declarations. Um, the instruction provides for institution to identify and manage um, all potential conflicts of interest and other disclosures made by persons participating in the procurement processes to en enable the accounting officer and the accounting authority to make informed decisions about the person participating in the SEM process. The review that um, OCPO performed um, brought to, to the forefront 
um, a number of inconsistencies that exist within the broader public sector legislation and the expectation that SEM prescript um, resolves them. For example, not employees of the state are banned from the public sector procurement despite the utterances in various um, platforms which give that impression. The Public Administration Management Act um, of 2014 um, defines employee and public service and when reading these um, together, they um, exclude employees of state-owned companies. Therefore, it is not clear as to what basis, what legislative prescripts may SEM public procurement use to determine what an employee can and cannot do. Um, so we have um, clarified that in the instruction um, and therefore the SOEs, SOEs are, rope, are roped in, um, in, in the new instruction. With regards to the extension of the application, the previous um, standard bidding documents um, for eight and nine were not applicable to schedule two, 3B and 3D public entities, um, but the revised um, standard bidding for document B includes these other entities as well. So basically when it comes to issues of dis disclosure and declarations, um, we had challenges with a definition of employee. We also had a challenge with the inclusion of some of the schedules um, of the um, 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 public entities, especially those um, two, three, two, three B and three Ds, we have narrowed the gap and we have closed that gap in the new instruction and made sure that they are included. Um, the, the issue of restrictions of persons from conducting business with the state um, um, during the review of, 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 of the instruction of three, sixteen, seventeen, um, OCPO um, established that. When it comes to the restrictions of suppliers um, with regards to PFMA related transgressions, there was a challenge in that the um, general conditions of contract was not issued with application to the schedules 2, 3B and 3D public entities, hence the vacuum in the case of these entities um, as, as regulation 14 of the, of the public procurement um, of the PPR regulations um, could not apply to them, um, but we have closed the gap now. Um, 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 when it comes to restriction of suppliers and 2, 3B and 3D um, um, are def therefore um, included in the um, current instructions. And it, in this instruction, we have unpacked the process to follow when restricting a person in terms of PFMA. Um, I may have to indicate to, to, to the honorable chair and the honorable members that um, I'm only speaking about restrictions um, in, in line with PFMA because the um, regulations um, which also um, indicated restrictions were declared invalid and we have dealt with, with that one um, in our previous deliberations. Um, only um, the um, suppliers may only be restricted in terms of PFMA um, with the invalidity of the um, 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 public procurement regulations of 2017. We've also closed the gap um, between um, deviations from normal bidding processes and expansions and variations. If you could excuse me a second, um, um, Chair. My throat was getting dry and water was located far from me. Thank you very much. Um, if I may proceed, honorable chair, honorable members, um, what the power to approve procurement by other means, um, ex ex for an example, deviations from inviting competitive bids, which included um, or includes limit limited bidding. Um, the limited bidding here is the sole source, your single source, your multiple source. Um, 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 we, we have provided um, that in the new instruction, and we've given the power um, to the accounting offices and the accounting authorities. So this power to support or not support is no longer vested in the relevant treasuries. The relevant treasuries in this instance would be the national treasury and the provincial treasuries. The accounting offices and the accounting offices would have to officiate um, and adjudicate on the request for um, um, deviations, expansions, and variations. This is as um, 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 originally intended in the PFMA um, when it was turned into law. The instruction provides for monthly reporting on procurement by other means to the relevant treasuries 
um, and the um, Auditor General of South Africa. Um, the reporting um, requirement is quite stringent um, and therefore we will be in the position to, 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 to interrogate the information that we receive and we'll, we will be in a position as the National Treasury, interrogate the information. Um, if there is a need for us to do an investigation into some of these deviations and variations and modifications, we will do so in line with the applicable um, legislative framework that National Treasury may invoke to be able to make sure that accounting officers and accounting authorities are, are held accountable. And the um, AGSA would also be in a position to utilize the reports that we will generate um, to probe further when they are doing their um, um, annual um, audits and make sure that the loop is closed and that there is no blurry area with regards to how the accounting offices and authorities have applied their authority with regards to the deviations um, um, and expansions and modifications of the contract. More, moreover, so, um, Honorable Chair, the provision has been introduced in the instruction to further provide for reporting in the institution's annual report. So we do not want anything hidden whatsoever where procurement by other means has occurred. occurred. Um, so the reporting in the annual report um, um, elevates the transparency of this type of procurement and reduces all, any element of obscurity um, of such transactions from not being known by, by, by um, 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 public as well as um, the executive authority. As a result, um, Office of the Chief Procurement Officer will provide input um, to the compliance reporting framework that is currently now being issued by OAGO. Um, Office of the Accountant General is looking at the compliance reporting framework, and certainly um, we will give an input into that framework um, and, and ensure that it covers all areas um, as we have envisaged them in this new instruction. Um, it is believed that these reporting interventions will strengthen transparency, which was a key concern um, 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 in the Zondo Convention of Inquiry into State Capture Report, um, here um, referred to as the State, State Capture Report. The, the next area that we have cemented in the new instruction um, is the bid committees. Um, it should be noted, um, Chair and Honourable um, Members, that in light of the various government um, governance in, 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 um, 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 we have observed as National Treasury um, 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 in the State Capture Report um, um, and took a view that it was necessary for us to emphasize the need for bid committees and to concretize the requirements um, even the SOEs um, who are not governed by um, Treasury Regulation 16A um, are included in this new instruction to make sure that um, the bid committees um, um, are given specific responsibility um, and, and that the um, delegation of authority documentation um, that speaks to the authority of various committees um, would then have to ensure that they speak to the new instruction and that government um, um, procurement committees are efficient and they function in line with making sure that the government purse um, is dispersed um, in the manner that is um, 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 acceptable and in line with the current legislative framework. Um, this paragraph aims to ensure that there is a system in place for the specification, evaluation and adjudication of bids by all institutions and not just the institutions to which chapter 16a applied. So the state, um, the SOEs um, are included in the new instruction. They have no, um, 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 they cannot make their own decision on how the bid committees should function. We have prescribed for all organs of states how the bid committees should function in this new instruction note. Um, whilst it appears that um, SOEs do follow some committee system, even though they call it different names. Um, some of them call it um, a cross-functional teams. Um, it is not clear to what extent the principle of segregation of duties and government provisions relating to bid committees has been accommodated within SOEs. Um, we have seen in the Zondo Commission how specific bid adjudication, com how bid committees um, have relegated their responsibilities to specific individuals resulting in the capture or irregularities that we have experienced. 
Um, this provision then in the new instruction um, six or is trying to instill a principle that a bid cannot be evaluated by one person as this opens the risk of non-compliance, abuse and corruption significantly. Um, the specific paragraphs 341 and 342 of the state capture report, um, which speaks to procurement of certain projects without the participation, knowledge or approval of the business owners of those projects. So we have closed the gap with regards to functioning of the bid committees in the new instruction. There are also general requirements um, that are included in the instruction. Um, the accounting office and the accounting authority may not invite price quotations or bids where no provisions um, has been made in the budget. Um, overrunning of the fiscus is something that we are trying to avoid and um, we are trying to make sure that the accounting officers will be um, and the authorities will be held accountable for having spent the money that has not been made provisions for in the, in the budget, specifically in that financial year and in the outer years. Um, the accounting officers must ensure that cash flow is sufficient um, to meet the contractual obligations. Therefore, it needs to speak to the budget on a year-to-year -year basis, um, must pay suppliers um, within the 30 days of received of, of, of invoices or a period provided for in the contract. We are cognizant of the fact that some of the SOEs pay within um, 15 days of receipt of the invoice. Um, um, and some generally stick to 30 days, but generally the principle um, 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 that that executive holds um, is that within 30 days, um, 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 suppliers must be paid. We are no longer going to tolerate a situation where suppliers go insolvent because government has not paid them um, for, 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 for goods and services that um, they duly qualify to be paid for where there are no disputes that have been lodged and there hasn't been any court um, um, proceedings um, for the disputed um, invoice. That accounting offices and authority may not place orders with suppliers for goods and services to be received in the current financial year and arrange with suppliers to be invoiced and payment to be made in the next financial year. Um, we have found instances um, where the contract is due to lapse in this financial year and payments is due to happen in this financial year because the organs of states um, do not have finance in this financial year. They delay payment and they then start um, spending money in the next financial year, resulting in draining of the fiscus in the next financial year. And that's something that we would like to discourage with regards to this instruction of um, um, the accounting offices and authority must also ensure that no prepayments are made prior to receipt of goods and services unless required by the contract with the supplier. Most of these provisions, honorable chair, um, honorable members, um, were included simply because um, 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 the office of the chief procurement officer has seen how supply chain management um, has been um, 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 crippled with regards to um, non-payment of suppliers, how the non-availability of budget um, 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 happens and, and, and how procurement happens where there is no budget, where there was no procurement plan provision um, for procurement of some of the goods and services. And there are no compelling reasons for that deviation from the procurement plan as issued to the National Treasury um, 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 should, have been, should have occurred. Um, um, some of the um, um, prescripts um, were not applicable to 2, 3B, and 3D, and we have narrowed the gap. Um, honorable Chair, Honorable Member, you would note that I, I put emphasis on, 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 on Schedule 2, 3B, and 3D. Um, that's, that's where most of the um, SOEs um, um, play, and we narrowing the gap and making sure that they are included and that their procurement happens when in line with the rest of the other government institutions. Um, and that there is a consistent application of um, public procurement prescripts within um, government. Um, there are also Hello. general. There, there are also general comments and observations. Just, just one second. Uh, hi, can we? Open Uh, sorry, colleagues, I'm not sure who. 
difficult to see who that is. I think uh, I've taken care of that, Chair. Okay, please say that good, Ben. Thanks, all right, acting okay. Okay. continue that, sure. Thank you very much, um, um, Honorable Chair, Honorable Members. The, there are general comments and observations. Um, the revised instruction make provisions for reporting to the relevant author, um, treasuries and the Auditor General of South Africa, as well as in the institution's annual report. I'm addressing now what the implications would be um, under the general comments and, um, um, and observations, Honorable Chair, Honorable Members. The institution of um, um, the intention of the monthly reporting to the relevant treasuries and, and AGSA is to ensure that they, um, where there are very matters of non-compliance, the Office of the Chief Procurement Office and those equivalent units in the provincial treasuries can act um, on these um, 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 glary matters. And that AGSA may, in terms of section um, five, subsection one D of the Public Audit Act, consider a special investigation or audit if the AGSA deems it to be in the public interest to do so. Um, basically, what we are going to, what we are trying to do with the reporting um, 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 is, is to provide for transparency with, with the belief that early detection can assist with the intervention by National Treasury, the relevant Treasury and the AGSA, and even lead to referral of cases to law enforcement if, if so desired, instead of the AGSA um, and, and National Treasury to wait for the end of the financial year and only audit, then um, it may be too late um, and government purse may have been emptied by an incorrect application of law and by um, irregular application of law um, or corruption that, that takes place. Therefore, if we um, um, become proactive in terms of detecting this through the reporting, we will be in a position to curb some of the malfeasance that may occur um, within a specific procurement transaction. Therefore, the, re the time is reporting or the monthly reporting is necessary to pick up these trends. The purpose of providing for reporting in the annual report is to ensure that the public also has access to this information as I've alluded to earlier, and it is not hidden away in an obscure report that is difficult to access or even interrogate. Um, and to also provide for ease of ref reference for the structures to whom the accounting office and the accounting authorities are required to report. Most of the comments um, that we are receiving um, currently, honorable chair, honorable members, um, to, the, to the draft public procurement bill, as well as some remarks from the state capture report have highlighted the lack of transparency when it comes to procurement processes. Um, and the aim of these reports is to further enhance this transparency. It is anticipated that the transparency will also help to hold um, accounting offices and authorities accountable for the decisions that they take um, as and when the incidents happen in the reporting that we would receive. Um, also, we have repulled a number of, of, of instructions and practice notes and circulars. Um, they, they, there are various reasons why some of them are repealed. One could be that there was repetition in, in various um, 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 instruction notes. Two, um, we have received far much better um, 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 best practices and therefore the practice at that time is no longer relevant. Three, um, we have learned from issues of corruption um, um, and irregular expenditure. Um, we have also learned from the Zondo Commission um, and state capture issues. We, we have also learned from the audits and the number of findings that we receive, um, 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 reports that we receive from the um, AGSA. Um, and, and simply the procurement landscape shifts um, from time to time and it requires that we, we introduce best practices and we avoid um, or in, um, discourage certain behaviors um, and practices within government. And that has resulted in that number of, of long list um, of instruction notes and, and circulars repealed. Um, and the new instruction note um, has covered some, most of the areas that were in that. And some we have just discontinued simply because they are no longer relevant. Um, this will serve to reduce the fragmentation continuously um, also, um, a big win as well is that we, we have a number of these instruction notes um, that are happening. Certainly, my office seeks to ensure that um, um, for a seamless functioning of SCM, we need to re, re, um, 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 reduce the number of these 
um, instruction as, as far as we possibly can. Um, in this transition period, as we are um, I'm putting together the public procurement bill, um, which will see a further reduction with, with the number of seculars and instruction um, moving forward um, um, in, 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 in the SCM space. Honorable Chair, honorable members, this concludes the um, presentation. Um, and I hope we have provided the rationale for why we have um, revised the new instruction. Um, I'm clearly looking at um, cementing um, the governance monitoring um, that, that, that needs to happen and how to detect fraud and fraudulent activities before they drain the fiscus and before they become a rot in government um, 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 and to partner with law enforcement agencies and specifically with AGSA um, to ensure that early auditing of some of these suspicious transactions could happen. Um, and but most importantly, to ensure that the accounting officers and the accounting authorities exercise their responsibility as um, required um, by the constitution and as prescribed in the Public Finance Management Act and, the, and specifically in the municipal space in the Municipal um, Finance Management Act. Um, thank you very much. And we may take questions um, from now. Um, okay, thank you very much. Um, uh, Acting Chief Procurement Officer, right? There's two hands that I saw. When I start with Ubabu Lis, he's had his hand up on the, sorry, Mazaman, I didn't see you on the virtual platform. So we'll start with you, then Babu Somio, you'll be next, and then we will get responses and then take the next set of hands after that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, no, sorry, I, I put my hand up when I thought we, we were gonna ask questions earlier, but... Um, I have got those questions. Thank you very much and good morning to the presenters. Mr. Chairman, the, um, the Office of the Chief Procurement Officer um, was set up, and if I remember correctly, it came into existence on, a, on an interesting day, the 1st of April 2015. Um, those of us who were involved in, in drafting that legislation and and many others um, were hopeful that the establishment of that chief procurement officer then under Kenneth Brown would have a far reaching impact on the levels of corruption and fraud. Um, sadly, that hasn't happened. Um, Kenneth Brown left, I think about two years after the establishment of the office and we haven't had a, a full time um, a procurement officer since then, uh, but thank you uh, to Mr. Fani for, for acting in that position. So one of the, the issues that um, faces the, the fight to prevent corruption and fraud is for institutions, particularly institutions like ESCOM, um, to be light-footed and be able to move quickly. Now, if one looks at the presentation this morning, there's, there's um, quite a few referrals to prior approval by the relevant treasury. I, I would like to know from the acting CPO, what, what kind of um, time restrictions are there on this? I mean, how long does it take for the relevant treasury to respond and 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 is this is this quick enough i asked specifically because when mr jahana took over as ceo of saa does one of the first issues he raised um was the slow responses in trying to to run a commercial operation like an airline and of course, we all know he, he eventually threw in the towel and, and left. But it was also something raised again during our visits to, to um, Madupi and Kosile um, in terms of, of being able to keep the lights on and being able to, to rapidly uh, make decisions and, and take action. So I, the question really is, are there any um, time restraints on these approvals being 
given in order to ensure that services take continue unabated. The other one is this question of, of, of sole source. What we found at Madupi and at Kwasile was the issue of emissions control being in itself an issue, which we won't deal with here, but the, the establishment of the plant being a sole source was being challenged by National Treasury, I assume, or Treasury of some sort, or the Procurement Office, in the sense that the supply of the plant uses subcontractors for certain plant within the plant. Um, and this was inhibiting the, the progress on, 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 on modifications and, and maintenance of these uh, emission control plants, which in turn, during one of the worst weeks of load shedding, caused losses in generation capacity. So the question there is the, the, um, the ability of National Treasury or the Procurement Office, Central Procurement Office, to, to find ways of getting these determinations done quickly. So uh, on applications, but even when it comes to defining what a sole source is. Mr. Chairman, we've been shown a whole lot of applications approved, not approved, conditionally approved and so on. Can we be told were, were those applications or were some of the applications or what number of applications were made after the fact, if any, um, and those that were not approved, did they proceed or did they not proceed in, in, in terms of the knowledge of the procurement office? Presumably you monitor the, what happens after the approval or non-approval is, is given or national treasury monitors. Mr. Chairman, I, uh, I'm curious. Um, I, I have a high regard for SARS, um, despite its capture by a certain Tom Moyane for a while. Um, and I'm curious about the, the relatively large numbers of applications coming in from SARS. Um, because SARS, like Eskom, needs to be fleet of foot. And so when SARS was originally set up and the receiver revenue was disbanded and replaced with SARS, it was set up as a, a outside of the public service so that decent salaries could be paid, etc. But I, I think the public service now, is, in terms of salary levels, has probably surpassed SARS. But what are the reasons for SARS's applications? Or give us some idea. Um, obviously, with the detail you can't give um, now. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you very much, Honorable Ispabu Samyo. Thank you very much, uh, morning colleagues. I, for me, I think uh, what. Uh, um, the honourable list has raised uh, is, is a is a is a key uh, aspect uh, of the last presentation, uh, which uh, seeks to negate uh, the first presentation uh, made and the crux of uh, referrals to uh, treasuries for various uh, approvals and finalisation of uh, other expansions or deviations uh, to. Uh, be finalized by the accounting officers' authorities. And, and uh, my, my question, therefore, is um, the role of the procurement uh, office uh, in terms uh, of the initiation uh, of these, and mainly this uh, uh, the, the notice which uh, has been presented to us and to the effect that uh, if you listen from the first presentation made, uh, it tells the story uh, that, that, that uh, the ju justification uh, of movement uh, from what we have seen uh, in terms of the quantities and the quality aspect 
uh, of what we want to see in terms of service delivery, whether in terms of time, in terms of price, in terms of decisions, uh, is, 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 is a very subjective uh, move than being an objective uh, move. And if you would uh, pile up such reports to us uh, uh, in, in relation to various quarters uh, in this financial year or other financial years, would uh, counsel the justification of the movement by Treasury to introduce uh, the new uh, form uh, in as far as matters of procurement are concerned. So, 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 so I fail, uh, you see, to uh, understand what is, what is the key driver uh, of seeing uh, Treasury uh, coming up with this latest, uh, uh, you see, publication, which, which uh, sought to uh, even weaken uh, the ability of the state uh, uh, to account for uh, matters of expenditures in terms of procurement and uh, rightful decisions as such, because the same accounting officers which are talking about uh, in terms of empowering on their own decisions are the same accounting officers wherein they have made referrals to yourselves, whether at a 60% against 40% uh, uh, value approvals, uh, which, which uh, uh, put, puts, puts us, in fact, me, in, in the failure to understand uh, why then do you come uh, with this uh, a sort of so-called improved uh, operational mechanisms in as far as the procurement uh, is concerned. And, and, uh, and, and for me, it, this, this new uh, approach uh, seeks to deepen uh, the, the current problems that we find in terms of irregular uh, expenditure uh, to be heightened uh, at that level and a fruitless uh, expenditure uh, in the similar in the similar way uh, why what is the the, the basic the basic uh, uh, informing uh, objective that treasury while they see the pileage of uh, if you can go to your files uh, for uh, such approvals that we have to, ought to make that we should move towards this kind of a uh, direction. Thank you very much, Chair. All right, um, let's take the, the third hand for now, Honorable Mente, and then we will get responses and then take the next round of questions. Honorable Mente. Thank you, thank you, Chair. Um, Chair. We thought Honorable Somlo, Somio is as covered. Uh, uh, with only two right now, one with the first presentation. Um, what is it that the National Treasury has done so far to deal, not to now keep to deal with um, the departments that have continued to procure and use systems that are not uh, favorable to our procurement systems and the expenditure thereof. We're in 63% that was not allowed continued with their procurement and do they have any idea of was that uh, kind of a procurement um, honorable mentor i think we are losing you all right um honorable mentor Honorable Mentor, we, we are losing you. Uh, all right, let's let's do this. Uh, National Treasury, um, please respond to the questions of Honorable Lees and Honorable Somio. Uh, and then Sister Maput Ben, please just try and get hold of Honorable Mentor so that she can 
uh, work on her connection and then we'll take her as soon as she's readily available for that. Let's get responses to that. Honorable Nkondo, you'll be first in line in the next round of questions. Right, National Treasury. Um, thank you, um, Honorable Chair, Honorable Members. Um, if I may um, respond to Honorable Lees. Um, The, when we received in the past using instruction note 3, 16, 17, where National Treasury was required to support or not support, depending on the circumstances um, applicable to the application that was sent through, um, it is generally accepted or expected by the organs of states that National Treasury, based on what, what would be submitted at that time, to apply their mind and support or not support. There has been instances where National Treasury requested additional information because there were blurry areas that National Treasury needed to make sure that the areas are covered um, before we actually um, voice our opinion with regards to supporting or not supporting of um, the deviations or the modification that were sent to National Treasury. That has resulted in some of the um, applications that were sent through um, um, prolonged, um, where National Treasury was number one, maybe uh, awaiting information. Number two, the information provided was irrelevant and inconclusive. Or number three, the organs of states have not submitted that information. Number four would be there would be instances where internal to add to, to National Treasury, we need to have a conversation for an example, where public finance has to um, 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 indicate what would be the financial risks of um, 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 approving such a deviation, or where the oversight or the, the, the division that, that plays an oversight responsibility on um, SOEs would also have to pronounce on, on that application. So an application would vary from time to time. Um, Honorable Lees has indicated that there were sole sources um, or sole supply applications that were sent to National Treasury. The instruction note 3, 16, 17 was very specific that in instances where a sole supplier um, 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 or the organ of states wants to use a sole supply, the accounting officer had the authority to approve such a, 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 a supplier. Um, there was no need for anybody to bring anything to National Treasury or any application for a supplier for sole source. There has been quite a number of, 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 of statements made by ESCOM specifically um, that National Treasury um, um, takes too long and wants to approve the sole suppliers. That is not correct. Um, sole suppliers um, 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 were delegated. Um, to the accounting offices um, um, to, to adjudicate on national treasury intervention was not, was not required and still is not required. Where we have received um, an application for a single source, we adjudicated that as such. If we have received in the past an application for a single source, um, um, but in our opinion, and based on the information at our disposal, that it was a sole supplier, we have referred that back to the accounting officer to adjudicate and make his decision and, and apply. Um, um, all the matters that we officiated on and we have formulated our opinion, whether it's a single or not, um, single source or not, um, we have given reasons why we have indicated um, to um, 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 our support or not supported um, in that instance. Um, 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 honorable Lees, we have tried as far as we possibly can to process um, these and we have reduced the time um, considerably, um, but the volume of work that we have received um, um, for the deviations um, um, is, is probably one of the secondary reasons why we have also um, considered making sure that instead of National Treasury um, 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 with limited operational knowledge of what's happening in, 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 in the organs of states and with, with, with only one functionary that is, that is technically qualified to, to, to interrogate the technical reports that, that we have received. Um, therefore, it, it was one of the secondary reasons why we, we said the move now 
to ensure that the accounting offices make um, 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 the, the places that, that the instructional must place an accountability to the accounting offices should happen and it should happen now. Um, One, one, one of the other questions that Honorable Lees asked is um, he would have wanted an indication um, of, of which of the um, 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 requests for deviation and modification happened after the fact. If such um, 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 happened after the fact, our response as National Treasury would have been National Treasury does not support um, such a modification or deviation because it happens after the fact. We would have captured those under the um, not supported um, 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 request for deviations and modification um, in our presentation. Um, before I give Dr. Manyati, who's standing in for Ms. Basani Dekers um, in, in governance and monitoring area, Ms. Dekar um, has, has bereavement in the family. Um, to respond to SARS, um, let me respond to um, Honorable Somia and Honorable Mente. Um, I, I think in our in our presentation, um, Honorable Somia, we 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 have given the reasons why we we had wanted um, that a new instruction be be issued, um, and 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 I think what we want to do is to ensure that um, 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 what, what Honorable Lees has spoken to as well, that um, organs of states um, 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 timelessly um, and speedily respond to their emergencies and respond to their operational requirements, uh, making sure that the accounting officer takes an appropriate decision and is held accountable for the decisions that they take um, and, and they account to their relevant executive with regards to the decisions that they have taken. Um, 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 the move to have National Treasury to, to, to place a word on, 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 on whether something is single source or not um, 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 has been um, as a secondary reason for, 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 for the um, 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 introduction of the new instruction note, um, 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 given reason why it was important as well that the accounting offices um, take accountability. The PFMA um, on its own indicates that um, what the accounting officers can do. What we have also um, indicated is that the accounting officers manages money. They are provided the budgets that they're supposed to work um, um, with um, and they are using procurement as one of the mechanisms to, um, 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 to spend the money that, that has been disbursed to them. Um, and therefore, we would like them, we would like National Treasury to provide a framework um, under which the accounting officers would exercise their responsibility when they disperse of that amount of money um, that is allocated to them. And that they are held accountable with regards to their compliance and non-compliance to these procurement um, um, transactions that they would have approved. Honorable Mente asks, what, what has National Treasury done so far to deal with organs of state that procure irregularly? The, the responsibility um, on, and, and holding the, um, the accounting offices accountable um, um, rests with the accounting um, 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 authorities and it rests with the executive. Um, what National Treasury does is to follow up with regards to all the audit findings um, through our condonation processes to make sure that all the deficiencies that happen in the process of taking the decisions that led into irregularities have been rooted out and all the officials that um, should be held accountable um, 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 for the irregular procurement have been brought to book with regards to the um, irregular expenditure framework that we apply um, for all the irregular expenditure um, um, I must add also that the internal audit processes, um, as well the, 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 um, the audit committees are supposed to make sure um, that all the irregular expenditure or the audit findings that have been raised by the um, AGSA are followed through and that the corrective actions have been put in place even before they come for a condonation process with National Treasury um, to make sure that the sound processes um, and that the accounting officer um, um, signs off um, 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 on after he or she has made sure that he has made certain 
that the um, control measures are put in place. Um, 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 but the, the executive authority must ensure um, that they, they take appropriate action um, um, with regards to the accounting offices and the accounting authorities that have um, not exercised their authority appropriately, and that has led into irregularity in the procurement processes. Um, um, Dr. Manyati, if you may come in um, to speak on the matter of SARS that, that was um, raised by Honorable Lees, um, if, you, if you allow, Honorable Chair. Uh, no, that's fine. As he does that, um, Acting CEO, please take down uh, the presentation. Right, Dr. Magnati. Uh, thank you, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Fani. I just want to indicate, thank you, Honorable Chair, and thank you, Honorable Members. Uh, the issue of SARS also surprised uh, many of us in terms of uh, taking a, a number two spot, which was not normal for SARS. But upon our analysis, it was uh, indicated that the, the, the issue of SARS jumping to number two, it had mainly, amongst other things, has to do with the um, ICT systems for tax collection. So with other words, they wanted to improve the ICT systems that relate to tax collection. So that's mainly uh, on the expansion side. But on the, um, while we are still on the expansion too, there are several items that were uh, uh, indicated by SARS. For example, the renew of the internal broad due vulnerable services. So they had um, a contract there, but it had to be expanded because they, 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 need, they needed to extend in terms of their lease agreement, office lease agreement. And uh, there was also a network carrier infrastructure services that relates to the ICT modernization of tax collection and also the issue of um, uh, legal services. They had legal services that were incurred. So those cases had to be extended because the, the lawyers that were dealing with some of the actions or some of the cases um, that were extended. You know, in South Africa, some of the court cases can go on and on. So in that case, then the extensions were required. So that is in terms of the um, expansions, even though on the expansions, and it amounted to 841 million as they are number two from ESCOM of 31 billion. Out of that 841 million, um, we did not support 4 million, we did not support 44 million, we did not support 155, 115 million. So that indicates that a bulk of the applications out of this uh, 100 and, I mean, 841 were not supported. With only one that was conditionally supported, which was 90 million. And then the rest uh, when we then supported, which is four. Uh, amounting to 2 million, uh, 468, 112 million, and then four, um, uh, uh, also 4 million. So basically, that those were the reasons why we had um, uh, expansions, uh, uh, SCOM jumping to number two, which was not normal. And on the side of the, uh, the deviations, similar cases were uh, noted there. Uh, SARS, uh, we know that SARS do have um, a, a, a sniffer dogs the way they need um, to, to, to enforce law, SARS law. So they had um, a huge contract there that they wanted to deviate in order to get the veterinary services to service their uh, dogs that they are using in their investigations. And majority of the deviations also included the res residential accommodation, uh, in the areas of um, uh, Manguzi, Osi Bay, Northern KZN, because those areas were basically don't have any uh, official like flats in the, in, in the, in the big cities. It's, it's a rural area. So if you get a, an accommodation, you just have to go to, with that accommodation. So hence, it amounted to be a deviation. Majority of them were residential areas uh, in terms of deviations. And then, um, there was also the issue of sale of generators from the, 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 the SARS revenue building in Binoni. 
that also created the issue of the deviation and that amounted um, to 438,000 uh, and we supported that one. And uh, another one that might also have a big impact that we conditionally approved that amounted to 2.3 billion was the issue of um, a, a, a business flow chart within SARS. So it has to do with the tax registration, tax audit, bank details changes, and there are many issues that relate to tax collection. So that is within the SARS main uh, the core function. So we supported that on conditions. We did put some conditions there. That was the only one that was supported on conditions. And there are various others that has to do with the lease agreements and the, 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 the Deben office uh, of, of SARS it had to do with the fork leaves and I mean the leaves and so on. So there are many and the OR Tambo SARS office, they also had uh, the issue of uh, um, unarmed guarding services and of which those were supported and they amounted to 5 million the other one amounted to uh, 1 million 1.6 million so basically in the nightshell sars moved to number two spot because of those uh, the peculiar conditions and majority of those were not supported followed by those that we supported but with conditions so Thank you very uh, much, uh, Honorable Chair. I think I will uh, pack there for now. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Doctor. Right, uh, Honorable Mente, are you, is your connection uh, fine? If not, let's go to Honorable Mkonto, and then we'll take the, I just, system people can just assist me here with the, okay, no, never mind, let me do that. All right, uh, Honorable Mkonto, um, Honorable Lisa, is that a new hand or is it a historic hand? And, yeah. And, okay, no, it's fine, I'll note that. Let's take Honorable Mkonto, no problem. Um, thanks, Chair, good morning to you, um, Honorable Members and um, uh, colleagues from um, the National Treasure. Chair, I, I hope I'm not going to, as we are discussing deviations today, I hope with my first question, I'm not uh, deviating from uh, the, the point of discussion. Chair, there is an entity in the Department of Employment and Labor called Supported Employment Enterprises, SEEs. Um, my question is, um, uh, first of all, is the National Treasury aware of the existence of um, uh, uh, that entity? and uh, its key performance area being that of employment of uh, people uh, living with uh, disabilities. Um, Chair, they are complaining a lot that uh, the procurement uh, policies subject them in competing with well-established uh, uh, businesses, hence their existence um, uh, uh, is, is, is very compromised, uh, Chair. We, we might lose those uh, entities and that will be a big blow when it comes to the plan to employ people uh, uh, with uh, disabilities uh, in government. Uh, Chair, my second question will be the, the issue of the CCMA with regard to the contract modification and, and application. I'm looking at the, the amount, in, uh, the value of, of that and knowing the annual budget of CCMA, it, it, it looks like almost um, all of their budget goes to a, 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 modif a, a contract a, a modification. So I'm checking, Chair, if details of that uh, can, be, can be available. My third and uh, last question, uh, Chair, is the, um, the issue of the register of the abuse of uh, a CC, CC, SCM system. Um, according to the presentation, 
that is in the hands of the executive committee. They are just notified and no instruction is given to them. Fair enough. But then I want to know if there are any follow-ups. And if this chair is talking about um, disclosure by the officials um, uh, 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 responsible, does it has anything to do with public servants that are doing business with government? And if that is only given back to the executive to deal, to deal with it, are there any follow-ups by the treasury to make sure that the executives responsible, they do uh, 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 execute consequence management? Thanks very much, Chair. Thank you, Watch Conference. Right, uh, let's, uh, Honorable Liz, just stand by one second. Honorable Mente is back, so she can just complete what she was saying. She saw that that problem, and then when she's done, you will come in, Honorable Liz, right? Honorable Mente? Thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, I hope the network does not deal with me now. Um, Chair, my question earlier was, Given the fact that there is a high uh, level of non-compliance with the Treasury uh, instructions and regulations, wherein people, even when they are not supported, they go ahead with procuring whatever they want to procure. And in many cases, it results to a very fruitless and wasteful expenditure. Now, my question is, does the National Treasury have the details of uh, these different departments? And what is it that they are doing to deal with this particular case? Because if you look at the land bank, DEH, um, it is, and you look at the land bank, let me make an example with the land bank. When we undertook um, oversight the previous week, Land Bank was visited by the Standing Committee of Finance and was established that it is bankrupt. It continued to procure whatever services it was procuring and borrowed people money whom they did not return any of those money. And therefore, there is no value for money on anything that they have done. So what has National Treasury done to deal with such cases where people continue to ignore what National Treasury is saying and it ends up with no fruitless and uh, no, no fruitful result. It ends up with a fruitless result. Then number two, there is a situation where uh, service providers and in municipalities, I just dealt with one of the municipalities where consultants come back to bid for more work from the municipality. Yet they are in the database of the municipality and they have been given work with that particular municipality and have not delivered. But when the bid committee sits with a, a new list of which consultants must come in, the very same consultant will score very high, giving them an opportunity to come back to the municipality and be given some more work. How are you dealing with that area? Because this is the same case that we, which SIU is dealing with now with the Bay Bridge. The service provider that comes in does a shoddy job, but continues to receive more work and being paid. And, not, and National Treasury does nothing about such kind of uh, areas. And we want to check, how do you then cap this kind of a situation? We cannot have a consultant in a municipality which fails to deliver requires the municipality to pay it even when it's not as it has not met its timeline it has not met its deadline yet when it comes to the new 
bidding uh, season. They come in, they bid, they score high points because they've got all the equipment, they've got all the expertise, yet they are not doing what is supposed to be done. Thank you so very much. Okay, Honorable Liz, thanks, Honorable Mente. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, and thanks for the responses received. I uh, just want some clarity on the one, um, and that's the issue of, of um, after the fact applications, and, and then they're not, not supported. Um, the, the question then is, were there such applications? So in that category of not supported, which has been given to us, they, um, in there, were there such applications? And then what, what action is taken? Um, what happens? Do they just simply get not supported and, and then left to the Auditor General to deal with? Um, Mr. Chairman, the one question I missed just now, which I think is quite important, one of the key aspects of the establishment of the Office of the Chief Procurement Officer was the central supplier database that was going to be established. And, and as I understand it, it, it has been established. Um, I'm wondering whether it's, it's kept up to date um, and how effective it has been in being used um, nationally by, by all the government entities and SOEs. And then just a thank you for the response on SARS. Um, it, it's encouraging to note that it, it seems to be under control. I'm curious that there was one issue was the sale of generators at the SARS Benoni office wasn't a big amount, 438,000 rand. But um, why, why was, what was the application for? Because why I'm asking Mr. Chairman is we've got the sale of the national airline, which apparently didn't need national treasury um, concurrence or, or any, anything. But here we have some generators, relatively small amount, um, needing national treasury approval of some sort. Um, I, I'm curious as to how that works. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. All right, um, thank you very much. Let's get responses to that National Treasury. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. Um, maybe let me just start with Honorable Lees because um, the questions are fresh in my head. Um, the, the CSD is, is um, the central supply database is, is kept fresh um, all the time. Um, honorable Chair, Honorable Members, you would note that the central supply database interfaces with some of the um, 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 databases um, in government. For an example, the tax um, matters of suppliers are kept um, fresh um, because it interfaces with, with SARS. The banking matters of suppliers are kept fresh because it 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 it, it would generate exception reports um, based on the banking details. So it it is um, relatively fresh. Um, where suppliers register and there's no activity that happens, unfortunately, we cannot delimit the suppliers. Um, they still need to be on the database so that um, um, when the quotations are sought. And, and the organs of states filter um, based on the services that they require. They may be able to pick up these suppliers and maybe their chance of being included in the quotation system are much more higher um, than if they are rendered inactive and they have to reapply again. So no supply is dropped unless um, um, indicated otherwise um, by, by a legal means. Um, but the CSD itself um, is kept fresh um, and, and it's updated on, on, frequent, on frequent basis um, 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 by um, the service provider that we have. Um, and there are numerous enhancements that, that, that we, we, um, we implement. When we do pick up um, issues, um, 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 for an example, um, there was an issue with regards to this, the suppliers that um, get blacklisted and they go and open a new supplier, um, a, a new company at, 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 at um, 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 Department of Trade, Industry and Competition. Um, 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 the CSD assist government 
because the um, ID numbers of the, um, um, the, the, the directors are blacklisted and therefore um, 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 that information is, is, has to be um, the latest information and has to be updated at all given times. And we do do that um, 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 certainly. Um, the issue of supported and not supported, um, when we do flag a, a submission that is sent through um, and that it is not supported, we, we then flag it as, as a, a submission that we need to follow up depending on the impact um, of that submission to, 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 to government. There are a number of those that, that we have flagged. Um, for an example, the issue of coal supply at ESCOM, um, 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 there was a submission sent which we did not support and therefore we, we flagged that and, and, and we requested specific reporting um, to happen um, to, to National Treasury um, um, from the accounting officer. Um, and, 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 and it's just one example um, um, of, of those that we did not support and we follow through. Um, and yes, um, any um, um, request for deviation um, or modification or variation um, that has been not supported, we do flag um, um, the, audit, the Office of the Auditor General um, so that the, when they do their audits, they may pick that up. Um, what we are trying to do now with the new instruction is, is to pick up such trends um, with regards to the not supported and who has submitted those that are not supported. And jointly um, um, with AGSA, we will be in a position to uh, um, um, identify the risks and, 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 and put together their interventions to make sure that the risk is um, 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 the, the impact of the risk is minimized for for first the fiscus as well as for government with regards to the service delivery. Certainly, we don't leave them just like that. Um, if I may go to honourable mentors requests. Um, Where I have just spoken to that one now, and when I responded to Honorable Lee's um, um, request, where we do not support, um, certainly, um, we, 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 we flag um, um, the risky ones, and we definitely do follow them through. We do not um, um, let them go through. In some instances, we, we have asked um, 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 what the action plan would be for the organ of states now that we have not supported, and they need to indicate to us um, with regards to that. Um, I may um, 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 concede that in, there has been one or two in, instances where organs of state have flatly um, did not respond to our request. Um, and, and as such, we, we have flagged that as, as a possible audit finding and we will definitely follow it through and make sure that the accounting officer is accountable for having taken a decision that has not been supported. Um, and they should be accountable to the AGSA and to the executive authority for having implemented a decision that has not been supported. But at the end of the day, um, National Treasury's responsibility is to support or not support. The accounting officer is ultimately accountable for the implementation um, of a wrong decision. Um, and, and he must be taken to task for having done that. The, the land bank issue, um, um, there's two divisions that are involved with regards to this. That's, that's the public finance um, that manages finances um, of organs of state. The, um, the office of the chief procurement officer is to ensure that procurement happens in a manner that is allowable by the legislative environment. Um, um, you will note that in the new instruction, we have been deliberate by indicating that the um, 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 accounting office and the accounting officer must ensure that there is budget and they must ensure that they are accountable for having spent the money that is not being budgeted for. Um, um, the current um, 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 instruction notes did, was not that explicit with regards to that, but the current one now is. Um, how we will be able to manage this from our side is to take all the deviations and modifications that do not appear on the um, procurement plan that is issued to government and, 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 and they would, the, 
accounting officer would then have to explain how come that he has procured any goods and services that do not appear on the on the um, procurement plan and how they have reprioritized their finances or their budgets to ensure that that procurement comes through. And we will then work um, hand in hand with um, um, public finance with regards to making sure that the, the information provided to us marries what they have um, at their disposal with regards to spending patterns of that organs of state. So we are looking at making sure that there is a marriage between public finance and procurement and how we will bring the two together with regards to the new instruction, um, holding the accounting officer accountable for having spent what, they ha what has not been um, budgeted for. The issue of consultants that bid for more work um, um, when there has been non-performance. National Treasury um, 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 invokes the um, 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 provision of the, pub, of the PFMA with regards to restriction of suppliers. Um, the organs of states must notify National Treasury for any non-performance that happens, and they must notify National Treasury um, what they intend to do with the non-performance of the supplier. If, if one of the treatments that they want to, to, to invoke um, with regards to non-performance is restriction of the supplier, um, um, National Treasury would then seek them to follow through the provisions um, given with, in, in, in line with the PFMA and in line with the new instruction um, and in line with the old instruction and the um, invalidated um, um, regulations. So the onus is really on, 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 on the organs of states to inform National Treasury of non-performance and whether the supplier cannot be rehabilitated or whether the supplier should not follow through, um, should not be put through a process of making sure that they understand some of the principles. For an example, if they are budgeting um, um, and management of their finance is not okay, would, would an intervention by the small business um, 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 department of small business not be sufficient to assist them with regards to that? Um, or um, um, is this um, absolute non-performance and, and, and whether the supplier should be restricted and what would be the conditions for, for restriction of supplier? We do have mechanisms to do that, but National Treasury has to have that information submitted to them. Um, we have um, a, a, a thousands and thousands of suppliers doing business with government at any given time. And because we do not have one single repository um, 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 technology, to manage supplier performance. Therefore, um, reliance on the accounting offices to inform National Treasury where there is such is, 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 is quite important. And, and, and we will continue to, to, to lobby um, 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 those um, organs of state um, with regards to non-performance. Where the supplier has um, 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 entered into an environment um, where they have transgressed um, um, issues um, or some of their um, um, procurement. In the last engagement that we had with COA, we, we have indicated that we will work, we will work very close with um, 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 the HOCS um, 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 and, and all other law enforcement agencies. Um, subsequent to that, we have started working quite close, even with the Office of the Presidency, with making sure that restriction of suppliers um, based on whatever reasons um, is followed through, um, either from um, 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 the end of the accounting officer or the end of the law enforcement agencies, such a list is provided to National Treasury and National Treasury will then use that list to follow through issues um, that may have been picked up um, from the law enforcement agencies. But we rely heavily, like I've said, honorable mentor to the accounting officers to provide that information to us and we will interrogate that information and work through with them. Honorable um, Conto has, has asked um, um, whether we are aware of the SEE um, within the um, 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 Department of Labor, Employment and Labor, or Labor and Employment rather. Um, yes, we are aware um, that they exist. Um, do we support? Um, in principle, yes, we do. However, there is no legislative framework at the moment that allows organs of state to set aside procurement for certain designated groups, unless otherwise indicated by any primary law or subsequent um, 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 instructions or regulations. 
what we are trying to do or what we are going to do with the new public procurement bill is to ensure that we are explicit with regards to support for women, support for youth, support for people with disabilities, and support for any other designated groups, um, 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 specifically um, 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 when we look at um, what apartheid has done and how we want it um, um, and envisage procurement to be a lever with regards to transformation um, 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 in, in the broader society. Um, therefore, um, for now, all we have to do is to make sure that the triple BE provisions are carried through um, as, 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 as legislated and that the new public procurement bill will address some of the issues that the current legislative environment cannot deal with. One of them is set aside and setting aside um, procurement for certain designated groups um, is certainly one of the things that we are looking at um, 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 in the new dispensation. Um, the, the issue of um, disclosure and doing um, um, business with, with government, um, the first disclosure that needs to happen is the annual disclosure where organs of, um, where the officials and employees of government must disclose if they are doing business with government. And therefore we will take that information and we will ensure that such, such suppliers are flagged um, and such individuals are discouraged from doing business um, or taking part in activities or in leadership or directorship um, in, 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 in companies that do business with government. And, and secondly, where there has been violation of, of such a disclosure um, by um, officials of government, we will certainly um, um, indicate and flag that. All organs of states are supposed to go into um, 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 Persal and, and Persol and all other employee related data, um, databases to ensure that they pick up any suppliers um, 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 that has or that, that has officials that work with, um, that are um, 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 employees of government. The central supplier database on release, if I may um, speak to that as well, on continuous basis also speaks to Persol and Persol and all other databases um, um, that we can link with um, to pick up any um, employees that are registered as directors um, in companies and making sure that they are flagged and such a supplier um, would not be able to, to, to be picked up and do business with government until such a directorship has been sorted out and such an employee has been deregistered um, as a director within um, the, the, the CSD um, um, space. Um, um, however, we do have limitations. Um, any organs of state that um, whose databases are not or employee um, databases are not um, linked to CSD, we may not be able to, to pick them up. However, such a disclosure is required by suppliers and one of our standard bidding documents requires of um, 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 potential bidders to disclose um, if the, any of the directors are employees of state um, and such a disclosure is taken seriously and we deal with um, when we adjudicate the tenders that we receive. Um, I, would, I would allow um, um, Dr. Manyati to speak to the CCMA matters um, um, that are asked by um, um, Honorable Mukonto um, and, and also maybe to touch on the SARS generator matter. If you would allow, um, Honorable Chair. No, that's fine. Thank you, thank you, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members. Just to give details on the issue that relates to SARS generator and also the, the CCMA matter. Uh, on the SARS generator, basically just to give a background, the SARS was using the, the building in Pinoni and they then decided based on the conditions of the lease agreement and so on that they are leaving the the, 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 the building. So since they were leaving the building, they had industrial generators, those huge generators that they were using there for various purposes. If there's no electricity, they can use them and so on. So since they are industrial generators, it is costly and it is um, uh, it needs special transportation measures when you move from one building to another. And if you move to another, 
that building must be suitable and be ready to accommodate those industrial um, uh, generators. So SARS then proposed or decided to sell such uh, the, the generators to the landlord, the owner of the building in this case, um, who then uh, bought them. So to avoid uh, having to incur costs uh, of moving the industrial generators uh, to another building or to keep them in SARS head office, because maybe if the Pinone office is no longer gonna be operational anymore, moving to any other place. So it was best to sell these generators to save on the cost of moving them out and maybe getting damaged along the way and so on and so on. So basically that was the reason why SARS uh, um, they, they thought they would then come and ask for that permission based on the reasons that they are decommissioning that building in Benoni. So they won't need those generators anymore. Then they, they decided to sell to the landlord. On the issue of CCMA through your chair, um, 17 applications were contained in terms of uh, this uh, 70 million of uh, CCMA application. It is uh, well agreed with the honorable member to say the um, amount that was applied here is almost equal to the annual budget of the CCMA as it is uh, keeping on going down on an annual basis. But the 17 applications were basically, uh, 15 of them were about the lease agreements and two were about the cleaning services in the East London office and Rustenberg office. These are expansions. So we supported those two cleaning services for East London office and Rustenberg office. The 15 lease agreements, which is the bulk of this 70 million, it was also the lease agreements. Some of the lease agreements are in the areas where it is remote. I indicated earlier on about the SARS uh, lease agreement, uh, the way they leased um, in the areas of Mangusi and where it is not possible to get office accommodation anyhow. You only have one building in that small town, so you just have to go there and, and extend the contract or ask for favorable uh, conditions of, lease, of uh, signing a new lease agreement and so on. So there were 15 lease agreements that were extended and six were not supported, meaning that we told CCMA to go back to the market and test the market. So such uh, applications might be, for example, if they want at least uh, the extension in Johannesburg, uh, city of Johannesburg or city of Tswana or city of Cape Town, you hardly uh, run out of offices of spaces there. You can, but you can always uh, advertise because there are many potential property owners there. So there was no need for them to extend such contracts uh, or such lease agreements. So uh, that's the reason why we did not support it. The nine, the other nine to make it 15, we supported them. So that nine is amongst the, the, the lease agreements that are situated in rural areas or in the towns where the properties are not developed as such to have plenty of available uh, lease agreements and some other conditions that they put there. But six were not supported out of the 17 and we supported the cleaning services of the East London and uh, Rustenburg um, uh, uh, contracts. So that totals to 17 applications that came from um, CCMA. We fully agree that it, it's, a, it's a high amount in terms of uh, looking at the institution. It is a small institution in terms of budget that is allocated to it, but that's what we received. 70 million uh, accounted for 17 applications. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Okay. Right, um, colleagues, um, I'm not sure if there are any further uh, questions. Yes, Chair. All right, Honorable Mente. Yes, uh, Chairperson, I'm not comfortable with a response, can there be a clear indication of what method does head treasury have to track the databases in government, those that are in, in the operation space? I get the answer that there's thousands of them in the database, that's fine. But the moment, a service provider receives work 
and get paid for that work. There ought to be a tool of monitoring, not by the municipality or by the department only, a tool that also informs the national treasury in a mandatory form, whether quarterly or monthly, out of the service providers you have, what are their statuses in terms of service delivery and payments thereof? Because we get service providers who do not deliver, and then we get uh, 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 prices inflated, or we get these service providers demanding more money to be paid because there was um, under quotation of whatever and the prices have changed and all of those things. But we don't get a comfort from National Treasury that there is a proper tracker. Because all of these procurement areas and all of these services that are procured, even when they are not supported, and when they are just flagged and left for Auditor General to look into them, then we are running a risk of everyone else not doing anything. And we cannot rely on officials, accounting uh, officials and accounting authorities in other cases to report this out of their own willingness. In the spaces of municipalities, we know the politics that are at play. We know the kind of corruption that is there. So if ever majority says, no, we're not reporting this, in the in the in the in the municipal sitting if a council sitting does not adopt a report it therefore means that national treasury does not know what's happening there should be a tracker of the national treasury which is mandatory that all municipalities you have 10 service providers you have requested 1 billion rent from national treasury what's the status quo these are the time frames in three years, the project is supposed to be finished. But on the fourth year, National Treasury is not aware of what's happening. Yet there is a new request. National Treasury does not support. But when they continue to pay that same service provider, the National Treasury just flags. I'm not comfortable. Say I need a clear explanation. And if there is no proper tractor in place, when is it going to be in place? Thank you, Chair. Okay. Well, let's get a response to that, and then there'll be just one final question on my side. National Treasury. Um, thank you, Honorable Chair. Um, I think in one of the discussions that we had um, with, with the committee, with the subcommittee, we have indicated that um, one of the enabling environments is technology, and that government at the moment has various um, um, procurement systems that they are using, um, electronic procurement systems that they are using. And one of the um, objectives of, of, of putting together IFMS was and still is to ensure that um, all government procurement happens under one umbrella and all other functions that, that are of, of generic nature or, or, or that cuts across all organs of state um, within, within the ambit of IFMS. And, and this would have assisted us um, quite extensively with making sure that um, 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 all the procurement transactions are tracked. Um, we can, we can um, draw the exception reports and we, we can um, customize the reports that we require in order for us to do monitoring um, and ensuring compliance um, on a continuous basis. But in the absence of such an integrated system, we rely heavily on accounting offices to ensure that their, their existing governance structures do work. Within organs of state, we've got an internal audit function and the internal audit function's responsibility is to ensure and manage the risks um, um, that may result in, in an audit environment. They audit the financials, they audit procurement, they audit all aspects um, and, and they've got the risk register, which indicates which um, 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 what, what are their risks um, um, and what are the risks pertaining to procurement and ensure that um, there are control measures in place. Um, we cannot emphasize the importance of, of an audit um, 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 function within a, a, an organ of state and ensuring that chief um, um, audit officers um, 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 exercise their accountability and making sure that risks 
um, 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 are, are detected and risks are mitigated. But, but, but with, with also another governance um, structure that exists, make sure that there's no financial overruns, make sure that um, 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 organs of states procure in, in line with their budget and to make sure that procurement happens in line is the audit committees. Um, 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 what National Treasury um, 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 seeks to emphasize is that the audit committees are, are, um, are meeting on a frequent basis and they're looking at their financials. They have their primary responsibility is to ensure that there is no fiscus overrun um, and that in instances where there has been an excessive over expenditure um, 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 is dealt with before it even becomes an apparent issue um, at, at a national space um, 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 where national treasury detects it. Um, um, we are unable, um, like I've said, with, 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 with the lack of um, te technology that we, are, we, we have um, in government at the moment to detect these things. But certainly at the coal phase, the internal audit, the audit committees um, are able to do that. There is um, um, bid adjudication committees um, and the council that exercise an oversight responsibility and approves um, the procurement transactions. They should be asking the pertinent questions with regards to um, 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 the, the um, bid specification, um, bid um, SBD documents, um, 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 supplier bid documents, um, where we have asked um, pertinent questions. Um, 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 and also, they need to have a check sheet and controls with regards to where the account, the CFO is accountable to ensure that. Um, no procurement or, or publication of tenders for um, 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 goods and services takes place where there is no budget. Um, the CFOs know that, and they are not supposed to sanction any publication of tenders where there is no budget allocated or where they have not reprioritized their budgets to ensure that that procurement activity is catered for within um, um, the environment that they have. That responsibility rests with the CFO within a, a, a and the organ of state and making sure that the accounting officer also would not sign for any um, award of tenders where there has not been any budget allocated or where the supplier has not been performing. Um, 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 there are mechanisms in place to make sure that national treasury does not have to get involved in the operations and, 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 and the detection um, even in the absence of the detection through a technology, those gatekeepers um, and those uh, mechanisms are put in place with regards to the current legislative environment to make sure that um, um, government um, um, carries procurement in a sound, organized and, 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 and coordinated manner. And I would like us to emphasize the importance of the internal audit, um, the emphasis of internal um, um, the audit committees in, in, in combating corruption and misuse um, of finances within the organs of state. And certainly national treasury cannot um, um, distance themselves. The public finance um, division within national treasury um, 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 have a scrutiny of the finances and they definitely do um, take up um, instances um, where there has been an over expenditure um, and without reprioritization um, in, in the organ of state. Um, either at, 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 at that at activity level or at a cluster level where you're looking at clusters such as your economic cluster or your security cluster or your health cluster, um, where we're looking at the overrun of expenditure in that environment. Um, what um, we are doing from our side is we will intensify um, our um, 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 monitoring and governance in terms of the um, procurement plans that we, we require on, on, on at, at the beginning of the year and making sure that all the tenders that are published on e-tender, we will make e-tender publication um, 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 and marry the um, procurement plans so that any spikes with regards to a tender that is published where it is, has not been part of the published um, procurement plan, we will then um, um, require explanation from the accounting officers and, and remedy that situation um, accordingly and, and flag the public um, finance um, um, division with the National Treasury of an imminent expenditure where reprioritization or reallocation has not taken place um, 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 accordingly. So we do have um, those that, that, that we have in place and, and we would like those to, to be fully functional to make sure that government works. Thanks.
All right, thank you very much, um, Acting CPO. Just, just one or two, three things from me. Um, the, the committee has repeatedly expressed uh, its fundamental concern about the normalization of expansions and devi deviations ex as, ex as opposed to them being an exception uh, in the procurement processes of government. And the National Treasury has acted as a fundamental element of check and balance to ensure that we push back on the frontiers of abuse. Um, and at times a very lazy uh, outlook towards procurement in so far as due diligence is concerned. Now, having said that, and of course there is an increase in expansions and deviations, fruitless, wasteful and irregular expenditure. Um, we remain therefore with heightened concern in this regard. Um, why do I get the senses though, you know, that National Treasury is sort of shaking off this responsibility and sending it back to the problematic operational spaces, which is the various departments and entities, leaving them to their own devices with what I can only call very little safeguards um, and checks and balances from what I've heard and what I've been reading. Because I don't see why there is now a, a need to fix what is not broken. The checks and balances that you had in place, so at the very least at a uh, conceptual modus operandi level was fine. What you had to improve upon is your own agility and turnaround time uh, to respond to departments and entities on issues that they had presented. It's the very same people who are not giving you adequate information, whom you have turned down at times, whom are now going to be left to their own devices to do these things. So I'm really just uh, worried that uh, National Treasury is uh, engaged in what I can probably characterize as a regressive uh, policy step uh, in this regard. That's the first part. The, the second part, the extent of the consultation that you did, how far did that go? Um, so that uh, we can, and who did you consult uh, on these uh, very pertinent changes um, that you have, you, you have made? Because I think I go back to where I started. The fundamental issue is you are dealing with increased uh, expansions and deviations. Um, and I think there's one policy matter we still need to deal with, and it's coming next week, the disposal of assets, as Honorable Lee was saying. So I think we, 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 we sort of are not on the same page here. Um, I'm, I'm not sure what really would have motivated to the extent to which that such a major shift takes place. Uh, whereas we know that this is a problematic uh, element in any case in procurement and that we were relying on national treasury to be a safeguard, uh, notwithstanding the limitations which may have existed in so far as agility, general and time and so on. But as a fundamental principle, um, and I think what I really would want National Treasury to submit to us as well is the SWOT analysis of this change, the inherent risks that are now involved in it, the threats in particular uh, to this. And um, yeah, so I just, I would I really want National Treasury to, to take us along as to why. I think that is the critical question. Um, because I really uh, see it as taking us some, some few steps backwards. National Treasury? Um, thanks, Chair. Um, I, I think the debate that the, the concern that you have is probably the concern that, that, that we had um, with regards to we, we have been able to to analyze the data that we've got 
and the trends that we have picked up with regards to the number of submissions that we have not supported and the number of submissions that we have indicated with conditions. And, and, and the, the, but the primary um, 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 question that, that still remained was the, the PFMA requires that the accounting officers be empowered to make the decisions um, 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 that National Treasury is making or is advising them on with regards to the support or the non-support um, 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 with regards to their procurement. Um, and, and I think one of the things that we need to intensify and to make sure that happens is that um, 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 when an accounting officer has made a correct decision, they must be rewarded. And where the accounting officer has made an incorrect and, 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 and a horrific decision with regards to the application of the deviation and modification, um, 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 action needs, appropriate action needs to be taken to make sure that, that, that such a behavior does not um, become perpetual within government. What we also wanted to do was to enable operations to take place um, um, at the pace that they want to take place. Um, um, one of the concerns that we had was if we have um, a continuous um, 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 comment that, that indicates to us that the, 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 the speedy decisions are required um, with regards to deviations and modification um, 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 at the pace that would satisfy the accounting officers and especially the, 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 the accounting officers that, are, that, are, that have to take up market opportunities, your transnets, um, your SAAs, your ESCOMs that have to take up market opportunities where they have to bid for goods and services um, 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 from, 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 from the market. Um, Transnet has, has to, to, to compete with, 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 with road transportation um, and therefore their readiness to take up the markets without having to come to National Treasury to ask for a deviation process um, um, is required. However, it is required of the CEO of Transnet to be in a position to apply a mine and to make sure that all the balances and checks are taken um, and they are accountable for the decision that they have taken. And if such um, um, procurement is irregular, to be accountable for, for, for that irregular expenditure that takes place. Um, National Treasury on the other side needs to ensure that they intensify the monitoring um, 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 of, of, of the procurement that happens, especially in the high risk environments, um, such as those that I have alluded to, um, and making sure that that periodic reporting is, 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 um, 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 is, is analyzed and, and, and that um, organs of state of states would be requested to supply supporting documentation for those decisions that they've taken. And National Treasury expresses its opinion on, on, on whether such a, a, a deviation or modification was warranted or is justified um, and jointly um, agree on, on a mechanism to, 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 to remedy the situation if already implemented and, and has led into irregularity. Um, 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 government has to work and National Treasury has limited resources um, in most of these um, deviations that, that, that come through. And, and we would like to ensure that um, 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 operations happen and that government is not rendered inoperative by, by National Treasury and that um, accountability rests with the accounting officers. Um, 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 honorable Chair, honorable members, should the trends indicate otherwise moving forward, National Treasury would not hesitate to, to issue a new instruction note to remedy the situation. We are hoping that the interventions we put in place will ensure that the trends will come downwards and that the Auditor General would not pick up a number of irregular expenditure um, 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 on their site or irregular contracts um, and that we will engage National um, Auditor General with regards to treatment of procurement um, in instances where some of the irregular expenditure would have been avoided if, if, if um, the framework was worded or applied differently. And those conversations with, with, with Auditor General are ongoing with regards to how are we then, um, should there be a spike with irregular expenditure, are we going to deal with issues of irregularity and auditing um, um, in that space. Um, um, that's my submission to you, Chair, um, to you, Honorable Members, um, pertaining to the questions um, the Honorable Chair um, posed to all CPO. Thank you. 
Yeah, but CPO, you see, we, 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 we are landed with a situation where we're going back to where we were, you see. This instruct, the instruction note three amongst others was a response to what you are saying now, to say in the event that there's an increase and so on. I, I mean, I just, you've got, you are settled with a situation where you yourselves as national treasury were concerned about the lack of due diligence, just one element in so far as some of the requests that you were receiving were concerned. And now you're handing it back to the very people who were culprits. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure how logically that is because I would have imagined that if the question was about capacity, um, the national treasury must build up the capacity at national treasury to ensure that the safeguards are put in place and that the agility and speed and turnaround time are in place. So we, we, are, we, are, we are experimenting now with something that we already know. We know what happened when um, this eventuality arose. ESCOM amongst others, um, you know? So I, 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 I just, I'm, I must say that from where I'm seated, I, I just think that uh, National Treasury is taking the easy route. Because the implications of this now, amongst others, unless I'm wrong, is that, uh, you know, change of scope is in contracts, is a heightened reality in this regard. Um, and that the check and balance of ensuring that your APPs across the government spectrum and SOE spectrum um, are really not going to be as uh, tight as we would have would have uh, because this opens the doorway for changes. I don't get how if I'm uh, I'm saying I. I want to expand a contract and National Treasury says, no, don't expand that contract. Or I want to deviate from a particular process and say that there's a sole uh, supplier uh, amongst others. And National Treasury has said on occasion, no, we have not tested the market and so on and so forth. Who does the check and balance that National Treasury was doing now? And now the very people who have been doing that, it's not as if we have not seen an escalation in the request for expansions and deviations over the past few years, we have. And I, I can tell you now that there's going to be even a, a major increase now when it's actually in the hands of those who have requested. I don't get why National Treasury didn't build up capacity. As I'm saying, I think National Treasury is shaking off a responsibility here. Uh, I, um, the, the whole thing sits very uncomfortable. It makes oversight and accountability even more difficult and complex. We had, it was very easy to zoom in on National Treasury coming before us amongst others, presenting what they'd received and the, the reasons they had not, and then be able to proceed to, 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 to the other departments. But it's fine. I think we will assess this moving forward, but I think National Treasury must consider very, very strongly uh, that um, uh, we, we've been down this road before and the preventative measures or the, you know, the restrictive measures that were in place uh, have, have, have now literally just been thrown out the window. It's a very slippery slope that National Treasury is setting us on. Um, if National Treasury doesn't have the capacity, imagine the extent of the lack of capacity in the spaces where this is being taken. I, I, I don't think uh, I don't think this was thought through from the other perspective, and I think it's regrettable that we were we now being informed about it and we're not consulted about it. But it's fine. Um, I think. We've heard it um, and we will 
we will see uh, how it goes. But Babu Swami, I'm suspecting that you, I'm just checking here. Uh, but Babu Swami, I think you- yeah, I Yes, Chair, yes, Chair. I think uh, oh. uh, you have, you have, you have uh, just dealt with what I wanted to deal with was my initial question was not uh, answered satisfactory because it uh, bowed uh, towards the fact that the institutionalization of chaos uh, which uh, National Treasury is getting into. And as a result, uh, the outcome is not going to be different. It's going to be worse from what we see uh, in the uh, appeals from them uh, in terms of certification uh, of uh, the extensions, this and that, uh, in terms of their own operations. Uh, if indeed they do this consciously, uh, they would have done it uh, even better and uh, without denying the fact that the accounting officers uh, must be in the forefront uh, to account for their own action. The fact is that now as we speak, they're unable to and uh, further down uh, even a treasury attest to the difficulty uh, of making them uh, to account for or they are ill-conceived decisions uh, in as far as matters of procurement are concerned. That is, that is the case in point. And nevertheless, uh, they have issued the notice and uh, from us, I, I think chair, um, we really need to put up uh, a sharp eye on those matters which we think are valid uh, for the outlook uh, of accountability and oversight and the and, uh, uh, Treasury would be responsible uh, for whatever that goes all in as far as uh, such matters are concerned. There will be no way to escape it because they have opened the doors wide uh, for such uh, actions uh, to negate the proper observation uh, of uh, legal parameters uh, to hold uh, procurement quite appropriately. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, that's that's fundamentally the point, Babsome, because I mean, if the the acting CPO speaks about if things increase and so on, you, I mean, the KwaZulu Natal scope, for example, is dealing with an accumulation of forty-eight billion rands of irregular expenditure in that province, and they want uh, the departments have applied for condemnation, and you deal of about um, uh, thirteen billion rands. So. Yeah, let, I think maybe let's just get a, 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 a response or reaction from National Treasury on this. Um, Chair, um, the Honorable Chair, the and Honorable Members, um, the concern of the committee of the subcommittee is 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 not. I think what, what had happened when instruction note 3, 16, 17 um, was put in place, um, the National Treasury's intent at that time was to make sure that there is a central point where balances and checks are done with regards to the um, um, deviations and modification. And at that time, it was important that um, National Treasury um, exercise a thorough analysis of of what is happening. And I think that need still exists even now. But what, what, what had not been um, considered at the time was how crippling would that be? Um, or what the impact would that be in the operational um, requirements of um, some of these opportunities, some of these organs of states where the operational um, challenges requires um, 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 a decision um, as in pronto. Um, However, what we have put in place now is to ensure that um, we, we, we exercise our oversight responsibility by making sure that reporting happens periodically and we interrogate. Um, our methodology for interrogating um, 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 the reports that we receive will not be just incidental based on the incident as it is reported. We, we, we would quite intensify our analysis based on 
um, historical information and based on what we perceive to happen um, moving forward. So the whole methodology with regards to analysis of the data will not be linear in nature with regards to, to what we are receiving. What we would not be able to justify um, immediately when um, 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 we, we analyze the data would be the authenticity or the um, um, validity of whether that was, a, that was a legitimate single source or that was a legitimate um, modification. But what we would be able to care um, would be government um, irregular expenditure based on an incorrect decision moving forward. Um, but I must indicate, um, I'm, I'm Chair, at this present moment that the, the PFMA's intent was, was put in place to put a framework under which the accounting offices will operate. Um, and, and the accounting offices must be, must be made responsible and accountable for the decisions that are made um, correctly and incorrectly. Um, and, and what we have been shying away from um, for, 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 for years now is, 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 is making sure that the accounting offices um, are, are held accountable. Um, by executive and, and, and by all the other law enforcement agencies in instances where incorrect decisions were taken or um, 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 facetious decisions are also taken. National terrorist responsibility also, which has not um, 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 been seen to have been effective, was how do they um, exercise their oversight responsibility um, um, and, and reporting um, and analysis of the reports that we receive. Um, even if we were to stop or, or to withhold some of these um, 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 account responsibilities from the accounting offices temporarily until they've put mechanisms in place, we will do that as national treasury. But we, we gotta have to, to provide an, um, 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 a compliance to PFMA um, 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 fully with regards to making sure that the accounting offices take accountability um, and monitoring of these trends um, has to happen from national treasury. And we have already started with regards to putting together the methodology we would use um, and finalize it um, and, and, and get it signed off by executive within national treasury um, 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 on how this um, monitoring would happen. But the, the reporting requirements have already been issued with an instruction of, and therefore we would um, 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 analyze them as we receive them. I have indicated, um, Honorable Chair, Honorable Members, that um, um, should um, moving forward indicate that from a human resource perspective, the behavioral changes um, have not happened. Um, even when we have um, instituted investigations and, and put balances and checks in place, um, certainly National Treasury um, is obligated to review the decision that they have taken and make sure that a, a better corrective action is put in place, um, which will make sure that government works and it works in the manner that these oversight um, um, subcommittees require of national treasury moving forward. Um, um, that's, that's what I can um, 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 say on the matter at this moment, um, honorable chair, honorable members. And, and the concern of the committee, of the subcommittee, would be would be related to the um, um, DG of the department, um, 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 so that um, he, he is aware um, um, of, of, of such. Unfortunately, he could not join us. Um, he had bereavement um, in the last week, um, and therefore um, is still um, on leave. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's not be favorable that we we have this discussion further because two things emerge from the response that uh, you you gave uh, CPU. One is that obviously National Treasury has not been able to build up the capacity required to manage this ever since this instruction note was issued um, in twenty sixteen. Um, and the second point is that. Um, yeah, the point about accountability of uh, accounting offices, which your DGs and your boards, um, you know, hold office that they must account is, is well taken. Uh, but that comes at the tail end, it's post the fact. And what was in place was a system of check and balance, uh, analysis and critique, and just a matter of due process 
uh, to curb a situation where expansions and deviations are abused, exploited, or used willy-nilly. And as we've said, I think the phrase is commonplace now in this committee that expansions and deviations are not a norm, but an exception. We've repeatedly said that. And now CPO is saying, well, um, let that happen and then hold them accountable. So, all right, no, it's fine. Colleagues, are there any further um, uh, comments, uh, questions in this regard? going once, going twice, uh, going thrice, all right. I think uh, acting CPO, I think do convey to, I think this is a discussion we need to have, the concerns of the standing committee on this matter. Um, and that um, you, you, we, 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 we will reflect on it and consult with the standing committee on finance as well. And there may be a need to review this. We probably even need to, um, and in comment on appropriations as well um, and, and, and review this. I don't think that its application has been consistent with uh, you know, prudent financial management in the current climate that we are in and the trends that have uh, emerged. Um, so we will, we, will, we, will, we, will, we will probably come back to you on this. Um, no, no, not probably, we will come back to you on this. Um, so that uh, we give a final position on it and allow members to look at it afresh and our research team will um, interrogate it further, um, having heard the presentation that you have made um, this morning. And uh, please do convey finally our condolences to the Director General on behalf of the committee to him um, and his family. So thank you very much, um, Acting CPO, to you and your team. Um, we will meet uh, next week with National Treasury. There's another meeting with yourselves. On that note, uh, colleagues, let me say uh, tomorrow, uh, Honorable Lise, uh, we are meeting with the Auditor General to get a, a report uh, on the road accident fund uh, and on the on SAA. So it's not the meeting on the disposal of the 51%, but it's an AG briefing in terms of how far things are or whether things have moved or not moved so that we get the updated report on the status quo of the financials from an audit perspective of those institutions. The meeting with the public enterprises and national treasury and SAA on the disposal of the 51% is next week um, and on, 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 on Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, we'll be dealing with the ESCOM report. Um, so that is that, that is that I'm sure that uh, there's a, a draft program will be circulated to members. We are just awaiting the finalization of the schedule of the budget votes so that we do not duplicate or, not rather, or rather we, sh we would, should not uh, scheduled departments and or entities on days when they are doing budget votes. So as soon as that arrives, it's finalized in large part, then we will be able to concretize on our, on, our, on our programs. That's the difficulty of the second term is that it comes with um, uh, with the budget votes. So that's that for tomorrow. So colleagues, if there's no other comments, um, the the meeting is tomorrow, half past nine, and then the next meeting will be next week, same time. So without any further ado, in the absence of any other comments or questions by colleagues, the meeting stands adjourned. And thank you very much, colleagues. Have a good day further. The House will sit at 1,400 hours today. Thank you very much, colleagues. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair.